so Joe, what did you think about Ant-Man and Quantumania? Oh, uh, I thought it was really good personally. Like I know Rotten Tomatoes reviewed it poorly. It's like the worst reviewed Marvel film other than the Eternals. Yeah. I didn't think it was anywhere near that bad personally. <laughs> but, but to be fair, we did not watch Eternals. No, we did not watch <laughs> Eternals. Um Kang was a great villain. Like I am so excited to see yeah. what he does in the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward. Yeah, I I honestly I would say at first, I know someone said something like, you have to be into physics or something to really understand what the hell you were watching. But I didn't find it to be that hard to follow at all. No. They ripped off a lot of like the Star Wars looking characters. Yeah. And they put them into the quantum mania or the quantum verse or however you would describe that. But it was really good. It was a solid film. Um, and I felt like it was the first Marvel film in a long time that didn't seem laced with propaganda yeah so yeah. for me i was able to enjoy it without getting angry like every couple of scenes yeah so it was it was good i just worked guys i'm trying to go all out for this live performance so i'm thinking about like a hat like some type of a get up i don't know we'll see how it turns out so we're actually here because I have to get a few things from Zara. Um, this is the closest Zara to our home. I yep. wish we did live near like a real mall. Not that I don't like Disney Springs, but sometimes it's just a lot to do just to get into Disney Springs. For example, whenever you move here as a local, you have to go through security check every time you want to go to one of these stores. Yep. And while they make it as easy as possible, it's still too much of a hassle. Like if you were to go to Mall at Millennia, you just park and go inside. So we're going to stop inside World of Disney. This is going to be probably your best bet for anything that you want in terms of merch, souvenirs, gifts, things for your home on your vacation. Um, as a local, it's a cool place to go into if you want to have like that vibe of feeling like you're back on vacation. But it is an animal. Yes. <laughs> Don't underestimate it. No. Bring your patience. Yep. <laughs> and here we have Oswald, just in time for the Disney 100. 100 years of wonder. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow, this is pretty cool. They actually have an Oswald diffuser, which I am trying to start buying more of these because my mom is always saying to me how the candles from Bath and Body Works have like chemicals in them. They're not actually healthy for you. So I'm getting more into the aromatherapy therapeutics like reed diffusers. But yeah, that's pretty cool if you want to show I love Disney and I'm an Oswald rabbit fan. <laughs> I love the classic merch, just a clean Mickey with this heel off. Yep. <laughs> okay, so this is so cool. It is sour gummies in here. And it's Jack and Sally. That is so cute. I'm a sucker for sour um, gummies. So. Yes, you are. Yeah. That was his movie snack when we went to see <laughs> Ant-Man and Quantumania. Yeah. Alright, so we found some Michael Jackson style jackets here. <laughs> Maybe this will be a jacket for the performance. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, right. I don't know why I'm taking it so seriously. <laughs> you are. I mean, we've hyped it up, right? For months, yeah. So I'm one of those people, like, I don't just say something. I don't just do something at bare minimum. I like to bring it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. This is so cute. They have Ariel, Tiana, and Snow White, and they just look like they are best friends. And here looks like the full version of the throw. I think this definitely could be done tastefully, depending on like your decor at home. But I love it. The quilt quality actually feels pretty good. Like it's nice and thick and I love the sketch art. So this is what I'd consider. I don't think it really goes with our aesthetic right now, but it's something that I definitely would consider in the future. Yeah. So as you guys know, we typically have a nice cup of tea every night before bed, and I am definitely interested in trying this. I love that they stuck to Alice in Wonderland, and the packaging is just so cute. Like, you really can't. This is just so adorable. It is. Guys, Starbucks tumblers! This one is so cool, actually, because it has 
Mickey Mouse on here. Like, classic Mickey Mouse. And it's not that, like, really gaudy, tacky, blinked out one that I'm just so over. This one actually looks good. Like, you can see it's an iced coffee or an iced tea. And it just, I don't know. This one speaks to me. Yeah. And then if you want to flex, there you have it. You're at work, turn it around when your <laughs> boss comes. <laughs> And if you made it this far, give this video a big like. Yeah, please. <laughs> I swear, Dumbo is the cutest. Like, he doesn't get enough credit. No. Look at those lovely ears. Be proud of them, Dumbo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a tramp. <laughs> This is Joe and I after we have the space ciders at baseline. <laughs> oh wow, I love these t-shirts. They look like classic 80s. The cotton actually looks like it's really good quality. Probably if I were to say based on touching this, it seems like it's at least 40% mm, cotton, maybe a polyester blend. Let's investigate. Oh my god, guys, look, this is what I'm talking about, about quality. It's 50% cotton, 50% polyester. So I was close. I'm very, very good with touching fabrics and knowing the blend. Yeah. So I'm actually impressed because I was going to say 50%, but to be honest, I thought this is Disney. They're probably going to get cheap. <laughs> Glad to know that they didn't get so cheap. So guys, so far, I have to say, the merch is a lot better in here under <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know how long this stuff has been in production, <laughs> but the merch is definitely a step up. Yeah, it's a big step up. Like, I'm seeing, just like how it was on vacation, yeah. where I'm like, oh my God, I want this, I want this, I want this, doesn't fit. <laughs> I have to go back to my rubric. It won't work with my decor. I can't believe the series has gone by so fast. This appears to be the 12th one in the series. And what do you guys think of it? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah, the grand finale. The grand finale, fireworks and everything. I do like to see Mickey looking his best in a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> and here is the last of it of the 50th. I would say this is probably one of the most disappointing marketing campaigns ever yeah. that Disney has done. I don't think it's entirely Disney's fault given everything that they had to deal with, but I do think that they need to have some accountability when it comes to this. I agree. I agree 100%. It was just very disappointing. Like, I was really looking forward to it. Yeah. we moved during the 50th, but yeah, yeah the merch was just kind of fun. We didn't even get that license plate. We were like, no. nah, <laughs> over it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. What is Disney trying to do here? This is a nice feeling robe it's not satin but it has that satin finish it's probably another blend of polyester but it feels nice so guys these disney castles are still 75 dollars how long until these make it to the character warehouse <laughs> yeah i think they'll be there yeah probably so <laughs> yeah now i've made it so now i gotta grab this stuff uh, my sister and i were actually talking about how when I first moved to Florida, I was trying to wear more color. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try to wear color. And we had this conversation. I'm like, I just don't like wearing color. <laughs> I like my neutrals. Yeah. One of the things that I used to hate whenever Joe and I would try to research Disney was that there weren't enough videos that would showcase the little details, especially for Disney Springs. So here we're going to start a series where we do a full walkthrough of the most popular stores at Disney Springs. All right, so I finished and now I'll show you guys what I got. Yep. Oh, the second usual suspect is Sephora, which I will show you guys also what I got from here. Yep. All right, guys, so we did stop in Sprinkles and got a couple of cupcakes. Um, we'll show you guys what we got. All right, guys, so we'll give you those five tips when we get home. So we'll see you there. Yep. So we're home now, and here's what we got from Sprinkles. So guys, here they are. I got the Sprinkles cupcake and the banana cupcake. And Brittany got two strawberry cupcakes. They're the best, honestly. Yeah, they are. We love Sprinkles. 
<laughs> so good. So yeah, so now we're home and I wanted to share with you guys what I picked up from Sephora. So these two items I actually ordered online from Sephora and they were delivered. But I just did not open it until I was ready to film it. But this is the Fantasia one size um, makeup applicator or sponge and it's from Patrick Star collaboration which is he's another youtuber so that's pretty cool and also we have the original makeup eraser and it's Jack and Sally the nightmare before Christmas collection is a five-piece set so I can't wait to show you guys first of all I just want to say look at the packaging I love that everything with Jack and Sally is like a coffin I know it's kind of odd but it's really cool that they always do this with the packaging here is the back and one of the things that I love about this is that you can throw this in the washer so especially if you are one that likes to practice good skincare and you take off your makeup every night or every time you wear it um, this is really really helpful because I hate to overbuy on like the Neutrogena makeup wipes at least this is something that I can reuse over and over it even opens like it's a coffin <laughs> look. <laughs> oh my god look at that it's so cute it's oogie boogie it's Jack it's Sally it's the kids and the mayor I am super happy with these they feel very nice nice and velvety it comes with this booklet too in case you guys are interested so I think this was $17.50. And here is what I actually picked up today was the Enos Free Daily UV Sunscreen Defense. Um, so this is supposed to not give you like that white cast on your skin. Um, I hate that whenever it just makes you look super ashy. And then the Olaplex number no. three hair perfecter. That's it. So these are the tops that I actually got from Zara. As you guys can see, they're um, different color neutral. So it's white, black, tan, and all of these were $12.90 each. And their actual cotton blend is 58%. So that's kind of what I mean whenever I talk about Disney not really having the best quality, but kind of like being overpriced. So these shirts are $13. Those tops in World of Disney were like, 30 with less cotton all right so as you guys know we're back home and let's give you those top five um tips that we mentioned for new youtubers out there yep so the first one was something i thought about it was actually um i said in retrospect i wish whenever we first uploaded our content that we would have had enough planned for like a month yeah. so we try to do at least a video a week and so if that is also your format, I would recommend having four videos on deck with scheduled upload times. And that way you give yourself a grace period to film new and better content for the following month. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, for us, we're in the theme park space. So one of the big things that can like prevent us from getting regular content would be the weather. Yes. So if you can film regularly, definitely take advantage, especially when it's great weather. Yeah, because we do not film in the rain. No. <laughs> we okay so when we first moved here um we ended up getting our annual pass to disney world yep and joe was like we gotta go right now we gotta get it and i'm like well we can just pick it up when we go it's a thunderstorm no he wants to go in a thunderstorm so we drive through swampland which is disney yep to get this pass and we got sick so sick. yeah we were out of commission for like what two three weeks at that time yeah but that was right when annual passes first opened like the day they reopened and yeah. we were like okay we gotta get these because they may close them again so that's why that was the importance you know to go in even in a, even in a thunderstorm save it dude we yeah. already bought it online yeah we bought <laughs> it online but i don't know you know it, it, it's disney no. the technology at disney isn't always the best you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah, it's jankity, jankity, jank, 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 yeah. jank, jank. <laughs> So the next one is to be mindful of bigger creators in the space who do this full time. And you know, you may be the the, the small fish. Or a guppy. And, yeah, you, a uh, guppy. Or a guppy, right? A guppy or flounder. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
But you think early on, like, right, nobody really knows about my channel. Like, have that freedom to just be creative. And no, people find out pretty quickly, don't they? They do. They do, actually. It's one of those things that I think is just kind of like, when you're a content creator, I don't want to say it in like that cliche way where it's like the ego that comes along with the title. Like, yeah, I'm a content creator, you know. But yeah. what I mean by that is you kind of start to binge watch other people's content. Mm -hmm. Like for me, if I'm watching, first of all, I didn't even know there was a theme park channel. Like I didn't know this was a thing yeah. until Joe's birthday, whenever I took him to Disney World and he started doing all this research about this place. Yeah. And he's like, oh, great, it's people who like vlog the theme parks and they're so helpful. And I'm like, oh, great. Like, <laughs> yeah, cool. I can't believe people do that for a living, but. I mean, it, it was great. Yeah, you know? Know. yeah. <laughs> so we're living, but it's for fun. Yeah, it's, it's for so fun. fun. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, you know, sometimes you wonder, like, did I get in the right space? But the thing is, if you enjoy it, I would say you did get in the right space. Yeah, and I that also makes me want to think about something else that sometimes gets thrown around in uh, content creating. As people say, like, oh, it's oversaturated. This is this, blah, blah, blah. Um, YouTube has been around for years. Yeah. Every space is saturated. Yeah. Every space. If you're a beauty guru, if you're out there doing outdoorsy stuff, and you like to cook, it's everything saturated. So yeah. I would say drop that from your mentality and just focus on what do you have to offer yeah. for YouTube? Exactly. What would you like to see? Be the man or the woman in the mirror that you want to see. The change starts with you. I'm talking about the man in the mirror. <laughs> That's like a little glimpse, right? Yeah. That's a glimpse. That's a glimpse. So I realized I don't want to get off topic here, but one of the reasons that I brought up the binge watching is because I think that it is something that happens as you start to create kind of get curious like well what's the style for this space mm -hmm. what do other people do yeah. and I think that's kind of what happens with the bigger creators is that they're like they know everybody and they're like who is this that came yeah. out with a video and then you look and you're like oh they're new and you don't realize you're saying stuff like I'm live from Hollywood Studios <laughs> it's funny to watch some of those early vlogs yeah but um the thing is also to add to that, I would say just because you're a newer creator, I, I hate the term small creator, I, yeah. I, I like new creator, just because you're a new creator and people have done things that work before, don't just keep doing what they're doing. Try to stand out, try to be different, yeah. try to be creative. Try to, you know, show everyone what you have to offer because I definitely believe that everyone is special. Not to sound like one of those people, but I do. I think everyone is special and everyone has something to offer the world. Yeah. Like we're all here for a reason. And if you have chosen that you would like to participate in YouTube, then I would definitely recommend that you just focus on what makes you you. Like yeah. for example, I think I'm funny. So Yeah. So I, I I think other people probably if you watch this channel you probably think we're oh, funny wait, too. Wait, someone did comment and said you two are so funny. That yeah. was just like <laughs> a couple thank people you. actually commented thank that. Thank you. I am right. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, if we can make you guys laugh and be in the theme parks, that's that's a lot of fun for us. Ding. Don't forget to like this video. If you made it this far, you forgot. Yeah. You forgot or you said, no, I won't do it. You better do it now. Yeah, I mean, you made it pretty far into the video. I think it definitely deserves a like. Yeah. So speaking of being different, early on, we suggest not over-investing in your channel. Yeah, I would say just get a, cute, a couple of vlogs out first and then develop your own sense of style and then you will know what type of equipment you would like to invest in. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's good to make those investments into your channel, but also think about some of the out-of-box investments you can make that may add a little bit more context to your channel. That's just my personal opinion. Of course, by, by all means, if you would like to go and buy like a camera and then get like the software you want, but it is, it's a good feeling, whatever you can tell as a creator, you're outgrowing the stuff. And you're yeah. Like, I need new equipment. Yay! It's time to go get the gear, and I know which gear I want. Yeah. 
And that's the thing, when you get the gear, you want to know that it's the right gear for you. Yeah. And you also want to know that you're not over investing in gear. Like there's some scenes where it's like, we kind of like that raw sound of yeah. Disney World. So yeah. we don't want a dead cat. But then there's other scenes like in a dining review that we're like, oh, maybe we should have had a dead cat for this because it's a little yeah, loud in here. Or an extra mic or something. But yeah. also it is just my my thing. Like I hate to be obnoxious in public. Yeah. Like yeah. it is such a like pet peeve, but it's my own personal thing. Like I hate to be the person that's like in public, like my camera, my yeah. this, my, it, I don't know. It's just... It's so obnoxious. It's not something that I would say, like, if that's what you do for a living, I totally understand it. But what I mean is, like, I try to be respectful of other people in their surroundings. Um, and with the exception of being on a roller coaster, I don't know who thinks that someone's supposed to be quiet on yeah. a roller coaster. Bye! Mom, that's not yeah. happening. I'm going to be loud it's, if I want to be on a roller coaster. It's a roller coaster and every, every advertisement, have you ever seen the people not screaming? When it's no. Universal Advertising Velocicoaster or it's the new, what? It, it's not a roller coaster, but the Serengeti Flyer. Like, oh, yeah. People are screaming. They're screaming. Like, Could you imagine going to a theme park and like a commercial and they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't sound fun at all. No. But I, I do want to quickly touch on the um, obnoxious part. Yeah. The, the thing is, as a YouTuber, especially a vlogger, it's kind of weird because it's like, you want to make sure the camera hears you, that the yeah. audience hears you. But at the same time, you don't want to disturb the people around you. Yeah, I agree. So I would say definitely if it's your style, then go for it. Um, it's not to say that I won't become one of those people. Maybe I already am. I don't know it, but I just try to be more discreet about people surrounding and what I'm filming. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So also another thing that I would recommend for a new creator is to develop your own metrics. Yeah. So you'll see if you haven't already, when you upload a video, YouTube has a very very nice way of saying <laughs> nice but not that great yeah so they rank your videos you are your only competitor so they rank your videos minute by minute hour by hour um compared to your last upload yeah. so you'll upload something and then it's saying like six out of ten and you're thinking well you know what about this one i thought i did this or da 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 yeah. I often look at it as this. If I'm proud of the video and I get to have my own metrics such as, well, this video got more engagement. Yeah. Or I try something new creatively. Yeah. And then sometimes Joe and I just have our own videos that go out and they're tests. Yeah. Like, we know that they're a test. The audience doesn't know that it's a test. Yeah. But it's just something that we do because we want to play around with the back end of the metrics. Yeah. Um, and so that's also something I would recommend too is don't be afraid to experiment with your channel. Yeah. Like you are a creator. Like yeah. you have to do whatever you want. Like it's the best thing really. It's one of my favorite things to do on my spare time. Um, and I really recommend for people to not beat themselves up over it. Yeah, I mean, you hear a lot about people like being upset about their, their views and stuff yeah. and how a lot of people on YouTube, you know, maybe they battle things like depression and stuff. And yeah. it's just when you look at up and down arrows, you, you could kind of understand where maybe that happens, but yeah. just have your own metrics. I mean, YouTube is not going to know everything, you know, they're not going to yeah. know that you were late to uploading Tron's opening day. You know what I mean? You, YouTube doesn't look at that. <laughs> Us. Yeah. So, I mean, YouTube, it, it's just... It happens, you know? So yeah, have your own metrics. Yeah, and that's also something else too. It does help so much if you are a creator, if you can speak to other people who are also content creators because mm -hmm. um, they're actually kind of doing like a little psychological study on people who create content because yeah. this, you, you kind of have to have your own sense of self-confidence and you're also putting yourself through a very unique cycle of abuse yeah so they're kind of like what's wrong with you people but seriously they're looking into it because you're not supposed to actually engage with millions and millions of people most people grow up in one corner of the world yeah. they know the people that they know and then that's it 
but social media has allowed for people to put themselves out there to be judged by millions of people at a time. Yeah. Uh, and so it does take a lot of self-confidence, but I definitely say you are running into mostly nice people. Okay, so in saying all of that, we're not saying don't ignore YouTube's metrics. No. Definitely look at the data. Yeah. That is important. It is. But what we're saying is maybe don't focus on it too much. If you had fun making the video and you were creative, focus on that. Don't focus on maybe you're really proud of that video. There's some videos we're really proud of. But maybe it didn't perform the best, but we liked it. I mean, to be honest, when you're at this size, it's like you have your own scale and metrics of what you think is going to do really well. Yeah. But yeah, you have some channels that are able to pull in thousands of views, but YouTube has a funny way of rewarding you for those very yeah. good views. Yeah, if we want to, yeah. you know, so, if we want to call that a reward. I don't know how I feel about that, but... I think for me, I would just say, as long as you're having fun, then continue to do it. Look at the data, really study the data if you can, just so you have an understanding of what you can improve on, mm -hmm. but don't study it to the point that now you're depressed. Yeah. Or, you know, you hate creating YouTube channels, videos. Yeah, it, it, you should never hate creating content. You should always have fun with it. And maybe just take a break if you it you know it doesn't feel fun at that time. Yeah, or you know, try a new style of video. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just that's what's great about when your channel this size is you kind of can be more creative. Like yeah, of course you want to grow, but you kind of can just try things out, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it's like oh, well, you know, didn't work, but yeah. we enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and speaking also of creator burnout, I would definitely recommend. Once you've niched down and you've identified your target audience, then don't be afraid to branch back out. Yeah. I think this will help um, prevent creator burnout. Yeah, I agree. I definitely think you as the creator should just continue to be creative, try new things. You know, like early on in our channel, we did a lot of different things. You know, we were mostly were a theme park channel, but we also threw some other stuff in there. Yeah, because I mean, it was supposed to be part of our world and you guys would just come along and see the hobbies and interests that we have. Yeah. But then it was like someone else had that name. Yeah. And so we had to throw 71 on there. So kind of like anchors a little bit of that Disney there. Yeah. But it is the inspiration for our channel. It's mostly theme parks. Yeah. But um, I definitely would recommend as a creator just doing whatever you guys are comfortable with, whatever makes you happy because ultimately it is supposed to be like a nice positive outlet for you. Yeah. And I'm sure it's probably better than what you would imagine yourself having to do if you really thought about it. So yeah. even with that, any bit of growth is growth. Exactly, exactly. And you never know you could be open into a new audience by, you know, uploading something a little different. Yeah. So that's going to do it for tonight, guys. Yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed this content. Speaking about being, you know, different, this video was different for us. Yeah, a little different. Yeah, a little different. But we'll see you guys real, real soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>